What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we won't be working on the Audi or the Beamer, but we'll be working on the Almighty Gets, which is also known as the battery charger. So we've just had our new 10 inch Android displays come in. Um, and what I want to do is go ahead and put one in the Gets because one, it's only got the factory radio in it and it only has Bluetooth and two, so I can test uh, some of the features uh, on that unit. This will not be a full install on the Gets because that video is in the top right hand corner, one of those. Um, and that was the full how-to on the Gets. This is gonna be more, a little bit of install, and then we're gonna be looking at the features of this 10-inch display. Looks pretty crazy. Can't wait to see what it looks like in the Gets. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, before we get started, this is the big screen. Okay, so that's my hand. Okay, hey. it's a big one. <laughs> okay, that's the single DIN chassis. So that slides in, and screen connects right to that plug right there. Mounts on, screws up, nice and easy. And then the plugs are really simple. So we've got a harness here with ISO connectors on one end, external microphone, USB input, some mounting hardware, GPS antenna, a remote, <laughs> reverse camera input, video inputs and outputs. So you can run your fully sick subwoofer. And that is all that is in the kit guys. So now we can start looking at the install. All right guys, here is the factory display, full HD. <laughs> Basically what will happen is this will be removed, the new chassis will go in, the screen will sit on it. Big boy, it's probably gonna cover the vents and everything else, but that's fine. Um, and what I've said in the previous, in the actual, in the full install for the gets, um, getting this out, hit that pretty hard, getting this out is um, not too bad, it's just a pain in the, pain in the backside, you have gotta remove this, um, and you've gotta disconnect the air vent cables, but anyway. I'll get that done, uh, we'll get this unit removed, start looking at the wiring, and go from there. Okay, so once this panel is out, that's the old cage. Now normally you need to remove both of those screws, slide the cage out, and then you can put your new cage in. Make sure you put your clips back that fall out, if you notice that. Um, and the reason why we have to disconnect these is so you can actually get that out, that normally wouldn't come out this far. So, our new unit doesn't come with a cage. So what we might have to do is actually utilize the factory one. So we'll pull it out um, and have a look at it together. Okay, so just the same as why the uh, aftermarket radios like a Camelot or whatever won't work with the factory cage. The unit slides into the cage, there's nowhere to mount it though. So there is a bit of movement. So you need to work out how you're gonna mount that yourself. You can either drill some holes into the cage and you know line it up with the screw holes um, or you can do whatever you want. I'm going to do something sort of temporary because I don't think this gets is going to last a lot longer. Um, but yeah, just so you know, uh, for install. So, not the easiest application in this car. In most other cars, it's fine. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is probably get that mounted. And I'm also going to get the wiring done because I don't have a plug and play harness. I'm going to hardwire it. But again, uh, this video is not showing you guys how to hardwire in a gets video's already been done. This is just getting this thing mounted uh, and playing with it really. So let's get that done and touch back in a minute. Hi right, guys, our wiring is done. I've just used normal tape um, and I've left the steering wheel control plug there as well. I'll probably do that later. It's getting dark, um, but the powers and speakers are done. So now all I need to do is mount the microphone up here, run it down the A pillar, run it across here into there and I'll get the GPS antenna mounted nice and high. Um, get that in and, and then we can start looking at the unit. All right guys, that is everything back together. The unit is now in place. It's not going anywhere. Um, so now all we have to do is mount the screen, nip it up at the top. I obviously put all these back, they're all working again. Um, and yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a grouse. It just looks so wrong. Screen protector there, get rid of that. All right guys, now if you didn't catch it before, the reason I did this was for testing purposes. Okay, so let's test stuff. Make sure we get radio. Get it up to 21 today, down to 11 tonight. Good. Tomorrow, Guys, there she is. I know it looks terrible right now, so what we might do is come back when we've got some light um, and we'll look at it again and I can show you all the features, but you've seen it kind of in action. 
All right guys, welcome back. I have been driving the car for a couple of days now. I've been testing this unit out, uh, just getting to know the features and stuff, um, and results are in. It's been good so far. I've showed a few people, they all think it's really cool. I think it's cool. Everything has been working great. Uh, CarPlay works wirelessly, it connects automatically. Uh, you can turn that on or off. Uh, we'll go through the features anyway, uh, but yeah, it's been great. I'll show you a couple of things that I was worried about. So, and I'll show you obviously how it's mounted. <laughs> it's so big. Okay, so that's where it's mounted. Now you can see we've got the single DIN right here. I was able to get the trim ring around it as well. Um, and that's been mounted in, it's not going anywhere. Now what happens basically is once your single DIN is mounted, this screen slides on right here. There's basically a little square here that slides in. These two screws line up, boom, pop them in. And there's one at the bottom as well. And then what you're left with is the screen here. Now it's on like a rotator ball sort of setup. So what you can do when you're sitting down is literally move the screen up, down, left, right. Okay, it's got, it's got a fair bit of resistance on it. It doesn't fall or anything. And the other thing you can do is, so what I noticed was, you can see one vent was closed. So I had the vents both uh, open and cranked on when I was driving around and I was worried that's where it was sitting before. I was worried about the heat on the screen. And so, yeah, what you can do is what I just showed you. Just a bit of pressure. You can hear it click up and down. So I leave it there now, put a bit of tilt. And there she is. It's really good with the glare and everything, but this is a really small car and it's freaking loaded with tools and stuff. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much how it looks. Um, microphone I've mounted, uh, USBs I just run into the glove box. <laughs> oh, look at all those receipts. And yeah, there's a little USB here, which I said. And also um, takes SD card, SD card input right here, auxiliary input right there, as you can see. Um, and man, these things just have everything. But I really wanted to turn it on. and show you guys. So, what I might do is get it set up on the tripod and then we'll um, look at it together. All right guys, here it is. So I'm not sure if you've seen many of these Android systems before, but basically, one thing, time is wrong, so I've got to set that. I haven't really played around with that too much. Um, but basically, this is your homepage, oh, radio. Did you end up hooking up? Okay, volume tabs on the, uh, volume. So you've got power here volume up, volume down, home, back button, all on the side there. And um, then obviously that's the radio. You can go ahead and press home, bring you back home. Navigation will bring up Google Maps. To do that, you wanna go into Wi-Fi. So this is where these things get pretty cool. On your phone, turn your hotspot on. Okay, if you've got a dash cam, you can connect to that, which is also pretty cool. Okay, once that's on, that'll connect for you. And then you connect it to the internet and you can see the hotspots on right there. Well, if you've signed into your Google account, which I have, it'll sign you in right here. Then you've got the map that will work with internet. Um, you don't need to have this connected. This is just one way to use it. Then you can go home again. Bluetooth and Bluetooth music, pretty straightforward. Just pair your phone, it will work. The AUX in, which we looked at, video so via usb there or the other two in the glove box you can you know watch video files put load video files onto the unit there's settings here you can play with your network settings app settings car settings display okay sorry of course the sd card got full um so as we were apps all of this stuff will work with internet now so if you want to google chrome you could surf the internet easy connection will mirror your phone for you DVR, don't worry about. Front camera, if you want to, you can sign into Facebook. Um, Gmail right there. Maps again, navigation. Play Store, you can download apps. YouTube. So once you've got internet and you're signed in, it'll load up YouTube for you. Then you can, you know, watch anything you want. So Jake Paul interview, there you go. So he's about to fight this weekend. Plus you get access to... If I know at the end of the day I didn't do something, okay. and someone's making some up, I'm gonna come out and defend myself. Then, one of the last things that I love, uh, Z-Link, so, oh yeah, you got widgets too, so you can, you know, really customize these things. 
Go Z Link. It'll connect to your phone. I don't even have my phone with me. Oh, there it is. Okay, phone's here. Okay, now that's connected. The hotspot's off now. CarPlay, this is a huge thing that a lot of people, a lot of you guys will use. Okay, play some music. Okay. Uh, one other thing is it's made the speakers in this car actually sound good because they are terrible. And guys, that is pretty much it. Like, I'll just show you this. Let's go. <laughs> just crazy what you can do with it. And if you didn't get a good look at this before, okay, that's the amount of tilt you've got on it. Okay, I'm putting a bit of force on there too. Okay, and then down. Up, oh, nice and easy. Okay, now what I'm wondering is, you know, over time, will these things loosen? Will that get weak? Okay, there's a little bit of play in that there. Okay, which you don't really, why is that? That's actually the bracket itself. So I could, um, I could tighten the bottom screw up. I think I didn't do it up tight enough. Um, there was an issue with the, this fascia, the factory fascia and the screw being sort of sort of behind it. So it was very hard to, to nip it up. Um, so provided that, that you get that in properly, that'll stop that. But apart from that, that actual movement there is pretty good and it's sort of tight. But what I want to see is on really hot days and stuff like that, does this get loose, okay? Because the last thing you want is just, you know, you go over a bump and just boom, screen drops on you, you know? But yeah, guys, that is pretty much this system uh, working. So I'm really glad to have something like this in the gets because all I had before was Bluetooth and it was just so bad for, you know, we operate on site, driving around, trying to maps from your phone, it just sucks. Um, I will list this on the website for anyone that wants to buy it. Um, or if you have any questions about it, just drop them in the comments below. Um, for anyone wondering about the Audi, that will be, I'll be doing some content on that soon. I actually had a problem with that car, so yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, uh, the full install for the Gets will be in the description as well. So this wasn't a, you know, install video. It was just a quick how-to. Um, if you want to see a full install on this car, that will be linked in the description. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.